Hello, Wozwer here, back with another video, and today we're going to be covering how to progress through range upgrades from a lowly noob all the way up to an elite PVMer. There's a lot, and I mean a lot of things to get for range. It is by far the most costly style, but what you get out of it is just insane. Before we get into this, there is a lot of varied opinion on what order to buy everything in, and there is no objectively correct answer. If you're debating between two things, the answer is almost going to be, it depends. This is a guideline, not a bible, so make sure you keep that in mind. As our baseline, we're going to start with an RCB, full armadil, and no herb lore or prayer levels. This isn't an overly expensive setup, but it's also not free. Full armadil is 27 mil, and the RCB is another 400k. On top of that, we're going to start with a Farsight Sniper Necklace, or you can even downgrade to a Ceridomans Murmur if you can't afford the 100k dunge tokens. And a Ring of Vigor, which is another 50k token. The total cost is 27.8 mil for this initial setup. Our first upgrade is not really expense related, but quest related. We want to unlock two things. First of all, Death Swiftness, and second of all, the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. You get Death Swiftness from the World Wakes quest, and it's an ultimate ability that gives you 50% more damage for 30 seconds, and it's a crucial part of any ranged DPS rotation. Next up we have the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. It's a reward from completing the post-quest challenge of Broken Home. It has a 10% chance to save all adrenaline while using a threshold, and also has plus 21 style bonus. It will be your best in slot ring until your death costs get too high, and you need to swap over to the Ring of Death. Next up we have our only two skill gains on the video, and they are important to knock out early. 95 Prayer gives you access to Anguish and Soul Split, though you will still need to complete a bunch of quests to have access to Ancient Curses, all culminating with the Temple at Seniston. It's a fun questline and a good early mid-game goal to strive for. The cost for 95 prayer was based on the current price of Dragon Boats and assuming an additional approximate 10% in boost, which nets a total of 52.2 mil for 95 prayer from level 1. The other skilling upgrade we have is 99 Herblore. 99 Herblore is enough to be able to boost with pull scores to make the highest tier overload, Elder Overloads at 107, and while there is a high level adrenaline potion that requires 119 Herblore to have the cheapest recipe, you are able to request assistance to get those made, so 99 Herblur is enough for max Herblur PVM items. I estimated a rough 5 GP per XP for this one, but if you're going to be making overloads to level, that number is going to be extremely high in comparison. The cost has now ballooned up to 145 mil total. Okay, it's time to get back to actual gear upgrades now that we have our skills and quests lined out, and it starts with Corruption Shot. This ability is such a major increase to range, not only is it one of the best damaging basic abilities, but it also has the ability to go to multiple monsters, making it deal even more damage. The only downside to this ability is that because it's a bleed, it can be overridden by other people if you are group bossing. But even then, as long as you get two hits of Corruption Shot off, it's worth using. The codex is worth 41 mil at the moment, but if you do raids yourself, you can grind it out for free. The Wyvern Crossbow is a great intermediate weapon, and my crew did a great job of highlighting how powerful its special effect is. With the Criminal Bolts, it can outperform even a T90 weapon like the Noxbow. Its 88 mil price tag is well worth it as your first big weapon in PVM. Back in step 2, we unlock the Death Swiftness ability, and now we're going to make it that much better. With the Planted Feet perk, it extends the duration from 30 seconds to 37 seconds. This is very powerful, and you can activate Death Swiftness with a weaker weapon, which is considered a Planted Feet switch, and then change back to your main weapon. If you're using two hand, you'll want Planted Feet on a Sun Spear, and if you're using dual wield, it's best to put it on a Defender, as that way you can keep your main hand ready for offensive abilities. At this point, we are ready for entry level perk. Your invention level should be high so you can fill up your armor and weapons with relatively cheap perks. In terms of perks, I suggest getting Precise 6, Equilibrium 4 on your weapon, and then Biting 3, Impatient 4, Enhanced Devoted 4, and Crackling 4, Relentless 3 on your armor perks. These will all require Ancient Gizmo, so if you haven't unlocked that yet, get to it. The recipes are all on screen now. It's time to upgrade to T90 and we're going to do it one step at a time. The first step is with T90s and with the Ascension Crossbow. And for now we're only going to be purchasing the main hand as it's the major part of the weapon upgrade. The offhand will come much later as it provides a lot less but costs about the same as the main hand. Also at this point you can sell your Wyvern Crossbow back getting about half of the cost of the main hand Ascension 
and having a T90 weapon opens up most of the game, as with Reckless Aura you will have very high accuracy almost everywhere. For your offhand you can use a offhand chaotic crossbow which costs 100k dungeon tokens, though if you don't have the level and or tokens you can use an offhand glaive which is slightly worse. Bleeding boots are up next and this may seem like an early addition to the list, I do think this is worthwhile as not only do fleeting boots have better stats than your current armament boots, but they also have two modifiers for rapid fire. First, it allows you to move while casting rapid fire, which is very nice for dealing with boss mechanics and or content where you need to move rapidly. And second, it gives a plus 10% hit chance on rapid fire. This is very big for any boss where you don't have 100% accuracy. I absolutely love this effect at Farago. They currently cost just under 40 mil and bring our total cost so far to 439 mil. To continue our theme, we're gonna upgrade the rest of our armor and get the four pieces of Pernix that we don't already have covered off. As we aren't buying the boots because we already have fleeting boots and are able to sell back our armadillo gear, the net cost of upgrading to Pernix is only 42 mil. The real benefit of upgrading your armor to the next tier is not the DPS boost, but the extra armor stat you get. The less damage you take, the more you can focus on DPSing. With that in mind, Amulet of Souls is one of the best upgrades in the game. It only costs 67 mil, but provides a ton of buffs to the player. While using Protection Prayer, it's an effective 20% damage reduction, and while using Soul Split, it's an effective 18.75% increase in damage healed from Soul Split. On top of that, it's also one of the best style bonus for aimless, works for all three styles, and finally it's one of the ingredients in an essence of finality, so you're essentially pre-buying one third of your EOF. It's time to open up the invention skill again, we're now at a point where our gear is somewhat good and our money is better spent on upgrading our perks. We don't need to go right to best in slot, but an intermediary where we can get almost everything we want out of it. I deliberately decided to avoid Aftershock on range gear, as unless you're going to be chroming swapping for greater ricochet eventually, it's just not worth the investment into an Aftershock 4 or an Aftershock 4 equilibrium 2. For armor we want Biting 3 going up to Biting 4, and you can also combo Dragon Slayer or Undead Slayer if you're going to be doing ED 2 or 3. Impatient 4 can go to Impatient 4 plus Mobile, that way we have the mobile perk comboed with us. Crackling 4, Relentless 3 can go to Crackling 4, Relentless 5, getting a couple more Relentless procs. And our Enhanced Devoted 4 that we had earlier can stay as it's still good. For our weapon we're going to keep Precise 6 as we had before as it's still good. And our Equilibrium 4, we're going to upgrade to Equilibrium 4, Ruthless 3, as the Ruthless stacks will give us slightly more damage. Our next upgrade is quite nice. It's the Nightmare Gauntlets. They have slightly higher stats than the Pernix Gloves with plus 0.8 style bonus and plus 11.5 armor over them. On top of that, they also allow you to move with Snipe, and when Snipe is used, it has a plus 25% hit chance. That essentially means that Snipe never misses with our current gear setup. These are the best in slot gloves whenever a target isn't poisonable or your hit chance is low. With this in mind, we can sell the Pernix gloves and recoup a little bit of the cost, though the total upgrade is still 94 mil. There won't be a situation where you won't wear nightmares over Pernix gloves. At this point, we've been using our Asylum Surgeon's Ring the entire time and switching off to the Ring of Vigor for ultimates, and while those are great rings, our death costs are starting to climb a little bit to an uncomfortable amount. To solve that, we have the Ring of Death. When you die, it takes 15% charge off of it, and because we repair the ring with onyxes, each death costs 30% of an onyx, which is approximately 1 mil. The Ring of Death also has fairly good stats with plus 25.2 style bonus, or up to 27.7 if it's also imbued from raids. This ring will be your main camp ring until Jack X decides to do something about death costs. To continue the theme of auxiliary armor, we have Cinderbane gloves. These are the other half of the best in slot gloves for range, as it's best in slot at any place where the monster takes poison damage and you have high accuracy. The special effect is that poison deals 33% more damage, and when you deal a poison hit, there is a 1 in 6 chance that you deal a second poison. This can stack to multiple hits, meaning when you do the math and converge it all together, it's about a 20% increase to the amount of poison hits you have. For range specific, this is much lower than other styles, as the Nightmare Gauntlets exist, but we still need to take in consideration that there are a lot of monsters where Cinderbanes are the best in slot glove and you will be ranging. We haven't even got to the big upgrades and we're almost at 1 bill in gear. With those auxiliary armor mostly sorted, it's finally time to get our second ascension crossbow. 
Offhands are way less important than a main hand because going from T80 to T90 often only adds about 50 base ability damage, but going from a T80 to a T90 main hand adds double the ability damage and also dramatically increases your accuracy as all your accuracy comes from your main hand weapon. You'll want to hold on to your offhand chaotic and not get rid of it as we're going to turn it into a flanking switch. At this point, you're ready for one. If you don't do any group bosses, you can skip this step as that's the main place where you are going to use it. But if you lower your invention level to 52 and use nine clockwork components, you get a, about an 81% chance of getting flanking four by itself. And each attempt costs about five mil to do. So we can estimate that the average cost for the perk will be six mil. The Reaper's Necklace is a bit of a pre-buy for our next upgrade, but if you're going to need it to make an essence of finality, you might as well get some use out of it first. Reaper Necklace is great to use at places where you don't have 100% accuracy and don't need the survivability of the Amulet of Souls to go through it. The two places that come to mind right away are Rise of the Six and Nex. Both places are tough to hit and both places are good money. The strategy would be to buy a Reaper's Necklace, go to Roth's or Nex and make the GP you need for an alchemical hydrix and then do our next upgrade with the essence of finality. The essence of finality is so broken. I made a whole video on it last August breaking down just why it's amazing but as soon as you can afford it you should jump right on it. You want to stick a dark bow in there as this is the best range special attack at this stage. It combos very well with hydrix bolts as the extra adrenaline can be dumped on dark bow special attacks. The cost of upgrading here is 227 mil as you'll want 80 mil for the ornament kit and another 147 mil for the alchemical hydra. With the EOF obtained, you're approaching the late game. It's the first foot in the door and the next step is to start using T90 armor. This armor degrades to dust after about 50 hours of combat, meaning you'll have to spend 40 mil every 50 hours. But with your gear, you're gonna be making 20 times that in the time it takes to grade. Swap over your perks we made earlier to Serenic and keep the Pernix around for niche combo perks for Slayer and non-bossing related thing. Eventually, that Pernix can also be used to make your own Elite Serenic when we do the final upgrade to T92 Serenic. Now it's time to save. You're gonna wanna do as much PVM as possible to build up that cash stock because once you hit 1.4 bill, you're gonna buy that Greater Ricochet Codex as quick as you can. Greater Ricochet is goddamn amazing. And again, I made a separate video on the topic for a more fulsome look. You can go to that video. It may seem like a lot and you might think you're better off getting some other upgrades along the way like the Desolation per Limitless or some better switches, but those smaller purchases are only going to pull you farther away from your goal of getting Greater Ricochet and fully unlocking the range style. Once you have Greater Ricochet, you need to get a Chroming perk on your weapon to make it synergize well. There are two options to go for. First off, you can just go for base Chroming 4. You have a 100% chance to get it. This attempt will cost you 42 mil as you need 7 shadow components and you'll eventually want to throw out this perk when you want to upgrade to Chroming 4 Equilibrium 2. Or you can go for Chroming 4 Equilibrium 2 right away and when you get any Chroming 4 you stop. This has an 86% chance of getting some form of Chroming 4 and costs 36 mil per attempt. On average this would also cost 42 mil to get the perk but it's the smart play is you might get lucky and the Chroming 4 combo you get could be chroming for E2 right away and you can skip a later more costly step when you go for that perk. With chroming 4 and greater ricochet you are truly ready for anything. I should mention that because we are currently using dual wield ascensions that you make sure you put the chroming perk on your offhand as that is important for keeping precise 6 on at all times. So if you swap over to flanking with your offhand chaotic, you still have precise six to help out your flanking damage. Speaking of precise six, it's time to make an upgrade there and it's with precise six aftershock one. This is a very small upgrade, but getting that extra aftershock rank is essentially free DPS and it only costs you the GP to get the perk. The perk on average will cost 30 mil if you get the armor components yourself, either through scavenging or spiritual warriors in a player-owned Slayer dungeon. 59% success rate makes it not too much of a pain to go for, but can be quite triggering if you miss more than a couple in a row. With our perks sorted out, it's time to save again, and this time it's for a Saren Godbow. It won't be our main weapon, but instead it will be our bonus weapon that we use as a special attack. It launches five arrows at the enemy, with the final four being scattered on random squares near the enemy. The larger the enemy is, the more effective that the Saren Godbow special attack is, as more arrows will hit it on average. The general rule of thumb is that if a boss is 3x3 or 
bigger than it's worth using the special attack while camping range. The 1.7 build price tag is nothing to scoff at, but much like your Greco grind, you'll have all the tools available to make money quickly, so it shouldn't be too bad. I should note, if you don't do any bosses that are 3x3 or higher, you have no reason to go ahead and get an SGB, and you can freely skip this step. Once you have the SGB, it's time to do some more expensive upgrades before another big save. First off, we have the aforementioned Chroming 4 E2. If you weren't lucky enough to get it earlier, it's time to commit. It's a 29.5% chance of success while using 6 Shadow and 3 Time Worn components. This is a frustrating perk to go for, to say the least, as the cost per attempt is 36 mil, and you feel like you're throwing money away. But the two ranks of equilibrium are so worth it. It's about 1.8% more DPS and that's a permanent DPS upgrade and on average that's only about 120 mil in cost. Secondly we have the appraisal prayer desolation. If you somehow still aren't 99 prayer make sure you get this before purchasing a appraisal codex. It's over 700 mil so it sounds very costly but it's a permanent 2% accuracy and 2% damage increase over just using the previous best prayer anguish. Thirdly, we have Limitless. This is a sigil ability that allows you to activate thresholds under 50% adrenaline. It requires 2,000 vital sparks to make, so the price tag is quite high at 350 mil. This is the least important for range in comparison with the other two styles, as Hydrox Bolt can act as a de facto adrenaline potion, so you don't need to use Limitless almost ever with range. If the other styles didn't exist, this would be even lower in the list, but it gets some bonus points as it helps you out with mage and melee as well. Now it's time for another big save, and it's going to be the biggest one of all, the Eldritch Crossbow. It currently costs about two not it currently costs about 2.9 bill, though as is over max cash, it's hard to have an exact price on it. You may be tempted to sell your ascensions at this point, but I would advise against it. You're going to want the main hand for any sort of shield camping you might need to do at bosses. For example, whenever you use Barricade or Reflect. And you're going to want to keep the offhand for whenever you use Mechanized Chinchampas at places like Rots or AOD. The one thing you should do is move your C4E2 perk to your ECB and put one of the other Chroming 4s on your offhand ascension. It's tempting to sell them and recoup the 400 mil, but you have an ECB, you have Greco, you have C4E2, you can make money so quickly with all this gear. We're definitely in the late game now. And to make it feel even more like the late game, we are going to be dumping our Saren Godbow into an essence of finality. This costs you another 365 mil between the amulet and the upgrade kit, but it gives you access to the criminal bolt effects while using the SGB special attack, and also you're able to Eldritch Crossbow spec at the same time. Very nice. The only downside here is that you now need to bring your Eldritch Crossbow and the SGB amulet whenever you're doing um, non-range PVM in order to use the SGB spec with Ingenuity of the Humans, but that's kind of not really that important for this range gearing video, but I thought I would still mention it as a possible side effect. Now that you have all this gear, it's finally time to get the best in slot armor, and we're starting with Elite Ceramic. It costs 822 mil to upgrade, and the major gains it provides is the armor bo is the armor bonus, and not the DPS. So that's why we've waited so long to get this armor. It also costs three times as much to maintain as regular Serenic. So while we were saving for all those big upgrades, it would have cut into our profit, making it longer to get Greco, ECB, SGB, and the like. And those are just way more important than this marginal upgrade. Though if you are going to be camping in elite dungeons like elite dungeons 1, 2, or 3, then getting elite serenic early might be more beneficial because you don't have to pay any upkeep costs. But if you get that upgrade early, you're kind of committing yourself to completing that content. At the same time, a shadow spike can be used to upgrade our fleeting boots to enhance fleeting boots. This doesn't change the powerful special ability uh, that it has with rapid fire, but it brings it up to T90 stats for the boots, giving it plus 1.8 style bonus over the unenhanced boots, a very, very marginal upgrade. At this point, you could consider yourself reasonably maxed out on gear. You have one style done, but there are smaller niche upgrades that can continue. This is especially true if you're more into Switch Cape. And what we're going to do, we're going to have to do a couple things. 
we're gonna have to purchase a pair of light bounds. This allows you to sell the main hand ascension as you no longer need it for anything because you have the main hand light bound for shield camping. You can also turn your off hand ascension into a flanking switch. Step three, place your ECB in an essence of finality. This allows you to swap off hand weapons to be able to flank during your ECB special attack as it only clears on your main hand swapping. It also allows you to take advantage of the bonus damage from needle strike in your ECB I personally made this very expensive 5 bell change and I love that I did it. The only downside is that range on the bite bounce is really small and it really comes into play like at places like Nex or Kiln, but if you're not doing those bosses it doesn't really matter. This is the point where I'm at with range gear and this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about the technically best in slot, but it's so stupid so really don't expect anyone to do it. First off, you need to buy a second ECB. This is for getting a two hand auto in whenever you tendrils and also for bosses like Nex that require the range. Secondly, you need three offhand blight bounds and two of them need to be dyed. So let's say Barrows and Shadow as those are the two cheapest dyes. Your main offhand would have to be Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2 on it, which you'd use for most abilities. Your Chroming Switch, which you would swap on for every Greater Ricochet, would have Chroming 4 Equilibrium 2. And your Flanking Switch, which you would swap on for Tight Bindings and Biting Shot, would have Flanking 4 Equilibrium 2 on it. That is overkill for me and probably for 99% of you out there, so don't worry if you're not willing to do those last few steps. I know I won't. It's not even the money, it's just about actually using those items is way more tedious than I want this game to be. I hope you enjoyed the video. It took quite a while to make, so please leave a like down below if you enjoyed it and you want to see the next one for Melee. If the reception is good for this video, you will probably see Melee this time next week. Past that, have a good day, and I'll catch you in the next one.